when I'm doing outdoor photography, I'll look at, at the newspaper, and if it says clear and sunny, no winds, uh, no, no problems with road conditions, I know that's a horrible day to take pictures. But if it says traveler's advisory, blowing uh, storms, snow, snow on the road, uh, uh, everything bad, then I'll go out and figure that when that storm ends, there's going to be some fantastic situations in beautiful light. Because it's, it's at the end of storms, when, it's tr when you have that transition, the edges of things in nature are the most beautiful. The edge of the continent next to the sea, the edge of a meadow next to a, to, to a forest, uh, and the edges of light, where light tapers off into dark, or different colors of light come together. One of the real keys to outdoor landscape photography is understanding natural optical phenomena and being able to predict when something is going to happen. I understand the way rainbows happen, and I can look at a lighting situation and figure out a rainbow is about to happen, and it's going to be over there, and I should be over here, and go over there, and if a rainbow is going to happen, I'll be in the right place at the right time. And all too often, you'll see a rainbow chase it, by the time you get there, it's gone. Well, rainbows only occur uh, in a 42 degree arc around what's called the anti-solar point, the point exactly opposite the sun. And that means that if the sun is more than 42 degrees above the horizon, the rainbow is hidden from view. It's going to be out of sight below the horizon. So you have to have a low angle of the sun, look opposite it, and then look at a 42 degree arc and on either side and see if you see a rainbow. And it can't be in cold air, it can only be in air that will have raindrops instead of ice crystals and have direct sunlight on those raindrops. And in those situations, I can predict where a rainbow will be. This is fantastic. This is just so beautiful. Perfect light. And having the water around it and the, the dark shadowy background really adds to it. For a good rainbow shot, the picture should stand on its own without a rainbow in it. Gotta wipe my lens off here. So I always try to find a scene that would look great without the rainbow. And if I can have a rainbow in it too, then I've got the icing on the cake. When I first started teaching photo workshops, I thought that all the things that I taught were well known by professionals. And professionals who took my workshops began to come up to me and said, no one has ever put things together quite the way you do. You ought to do a book. And after about three or four years of that, I decided to do it. Sierra Club Books, Mountain Light in Search of the Dynamic Landscape, which is a collection of my best photographs with an essay about the making of each photograph plus seven chapters of text on my styles and methods of outdoor photography. Now the Sierra Club began as just a little club that was oriented towards outings in the High Sierra in California. Some of the early members included John Muir and the photographer Ansel Adams. And then they became a national force in conservation, in preserving wildlands, and had a lot to do with wilderness areas being set aside. And my parents, have been members for over 50 years, and I was introduced into the Sierra Club as a kid. And the Sierra Club is a real front runner in publishing high quality nature books. 
And so it was natural when I became involved in outdoor photography and writing that they became my major publisher. We'll be rising to even greater heights with Galen in a moment to see how he's able to combine mountain climbing and photography into one precarious occupation. Next.